So to the non-soccer fans, hear me out. Our next guest is a guy who I've gotten in over the last couple of years. Correct, Simon Fudge? That is correct. You're a Regina guy now living in Vancouver. That is correct. And I don't know if you've watched any of the show earlier this week. I said uh, soccer. I knew this was happening. 10 to 15, up to 20 years ago, so many kids were playing soccer that I knew soccer was going to become a huge thing. And guess what, folks? It's here. And I'm getting all these requests to have soccer people on the show. And I'm like, you know what? I like soccer. I don't love soccer, but I'm not Mm anti-soccer. Sell me on soccer. Because so many of my friends are huge soccer fans. Uh, family members, kids playing it. Well, I miss, uh, I think Abu Metric should be in this chair, right? Yeah, Abu Metric would, would love this his... discussion here right now. But the reason I say, hear us out, because Simon's not here just to talk about soccer, but you can talk about the entire Vancouver sports scene because we've done that, mm-hmm. right? On, right? On the BC Lions and where that's going versus the Whitecaps. And of course, I'm a huge NLL guy. You got the Vancouver Warriors there just moved downtown. Vancouver's a busy sports town. And I just mentioned all these Canadian cities. That are playing in the playoffs here right now, mm-hmm. and Simon, you. So tell our listeners about yourself. Did I say you're a Luther guy? Yes. Yeah, I, you went to Luther. Yeah, I was. I was born and raised here. If if anyone knows the uh, cathedral area or Crescent's area of the city, that's where I was uh, from originally. Um, uh, I went to Luther College High School. Played soccer for the school the whole four years I was there. Even though it's obviously a basketball high school by what the reputation sports wise there and football as well. We had a pretty good football team back in the days when when I was there. Um, and then I kind of moved on, went to Vancouver Island, went did my university out there, and also played soccer out there because one of the great things you can do on the West Coast is you can play the game year round. And you can we play in winter months out there. Um, but I got interested in trying to go into journalism and particularly on the sport itself. And I've been very fortunate to do it for nearly two decades. Uh, it first took me to England, uh, where I was with a website called PlanetFootball.com. Uh, that evolved into being part of Sky Sports and the website Sky Which is Sports really Talk. big. Yeah, and uh, I was put in charge of uh, uh, covering the uh, the lower divisions of the English leagues, which is now known as the EFL, the English Football League, which was a lot of fun for me because my favorite team plays in those divisions, Bristol City. Um, and uh, so it was always fun to kind of wa- uh, follow all of that as well as covering other things. Got to cover two European championships, two World Cups with them. And then I came back to Canada and I ended up hooking up with the Vancouver Whitecaps, and I was with them through a very interesting time. From day one, basically, wasn't well, it? Well, not really. No, not you, you might be thinking as of the MLS, but yeah. it was it was I joined them when they were um, I mean their their existence goes all the way back to when they were created as the Vancouver 86ers in the CSL days. Right. And they have stayed in existence ever since. Uh, non-stop. There's no there's no other team pro soccer wise on either side of the Canadian or US border that's got that longevity. Wow. And see what we're learning? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I joined them in 07. They were a USL First Division club. Uh, we won a ch- the team won a championship in 08. But it then made the transition into MLS. It made it put a bid in in 2000. It where it put a bid in in 08. Made uh, got their bids you know accepted in 2009 and became an MLS franchise 2011. Then I did their fr- I was there for the first two seasons with the team. Then I kind of came out of it and was covering the Whitecaps and a lot of soccer on the West Coast for a site called Goal.com. There used to be a Canadian edition of it for a while. That allowed me to be able to cover the last Women's World Cup that was here in Canada in 2015, which included the final, um, which was quite the game, if, if anyone remembers. In Edmonton, between, right? No, in Vancouver. All the, all the games were in Was the semifinal in Edmonton? There was a semifinal in, yeah. in, in Edmonton between uh, Japan and England, yeah. But I was at all the games in Vancouver. Okay. And... Uh, um, you know, obviously, the Americans won it that year, and they've obviously repeated this time round as well. And then for about two and a half years from 2016 until the end of last year, I worked for FIFA. I worked for FIFA's website, FIFA.com, which uh, afforded me the opportunity to, to go to India uh, for the Under-17 World Cup in 2017. Um, and I went to the Under-20 Women's World Cup last year in France. So um, uh, that was a very interesting experience as well. So when I mention all these cities that have pro soccer teams, mm-hmm. Halifax, Calgary, Ottawa, Vancouver, um, and there's a movement in Regina to get one here. I don't think Winnipeg has a pro soccer team, do they? They do. They, they are part of the Canadian Premier League. They're in the, what's their yeah. name? It's Valor SC, and they're owned by the Bombers ownership. So yeah. Saskatchewan's almost behind a little bit, in everything. But there is movement afoot. 
happening here. And uh, people probably are aware of the Sas- Saskatchewan uh, Summer so- or Soccer Series that's happening. Uh, there's a game taking place in Saskatoon on the on July 25th between uh, this select group of players from the province against the Vancouver Whitecaps under 23 side. They've already had one game already where they played uh, the team that plays in USL League Two or the old PDL Calgary Foothills back in May. And from what I understand, I think they'll try and get one more game uh, announced uh, to play again in the summer here. And they're just trying to garner some interest that's out there to, to ultimately see if, if there is interest in this province uh, for professional soccer and certainly to join the Canadian Premier League. Well, you're from here and it's the world's game. It would seem like a perfect fit. We were a cultural melting pot, right? There are a lot of people that love soccer here. Yeah. So how close are we to this happening, do you think? I think we're very close. Um, I, I certainly think if the uh, the attendance for this game on uh, on the 25th is a good one, from from what I was, I was actually speaking um, uh, to someone about it this morning, uh, and they feel very encouraged by where things are moving um, and so forth. And I think I think it's got great opportunity. I've, I've always felt like that. Even I think when we we spoke a couple a couple years ago, that the fact that I think the dynamic of the population here has changed a bit. And what you've had is a lot of people who've moved from other countries to this province, and what they bring with them is is the interest in the game because they're coming from parts of the world where that that is the number one sport. That is the main thing of interest. But it isn't just I think that. It's I think it's also we've had a lot of soccer on television over the years. It goes back to the '90s and stuff when I was. In school and and what's been available major tournaments that have been live um but also you know we've had a fairly successful women's national team they've played in world cups that's garnered i think a lot of interest and also we've had big tournaments here we didn't just have the women's world cup in 2015 but we probably have maybe one of the most memorable under 20 world cups here in 2007 if you look at a lot of the main stars in the world game now that played in that tournament back then uh argentina won it there and a lot of guys like sergio guero and 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 angel de maria who are big household names played in that tournament uh, for example, so over the over time, it's really evolved. And of course, you know the the three big marketplaces became MLS franchises. You know, the Toronto C was the first one in 07, and then you had uh, Vancouver Montreal follow suit upgrading from their sort of North American second division status. And it's but then it's led to what we have now with the Canadian Premier League, which has come about because there's been a real interest to try and take responsibility and develop our own players to try and improve and strengthen our national team. So, yeah, I mean, it's an exciting time and an interesting time uh, uh, from all different aspects in terms of the game and, and people getting interested in, in in Canada. Well, it's exciting. And I know Darren looks like you got a point on this too, so I'll let you jump in in a second. But Simon, Simon Fudge is with us, soccer aficionado. Am I right in saying that? Can I, I say think, that? I think that's a fair point. From, from people Vancouver. Have, people yep. have um, labeled that with me over the right. years. Right. Soccer yeah, aficionado so. Simon yeah. Fudge here. And I, I don't mind talking soccer yeah. on the program because if that's what people want, that's what they're going to get. Yeah. It's exciting when you're growing, right, Darren, as we are here. Yes. It's not exciting when you're shrinking. And I'm talking about ne- not necessarily the CFL. They're trying to expand globally. But I guess the CFL and soccer in Canada, and it's funny how, how close the two sports are. You know, a lot of football players have played soccer. I don't know if mm-hmm. soccer players have played football. I'm not in the soccer world. Most kickers, right, grew up Certainly. playing soccer. Yeah. It's the, yeah. the, the, the kickers. Yeah. But give me an, a view from outside Saskatchewan, let's say Lower Mainland, mm-hmm. of the CFL. You know, Because I've had this discussion with Lions people, and they seem a little frustrated yeah. at what's going on out there. That sort of soccer is kind of going like this. Yeah, and uh, and that's been happening for some time. I mean, I certainly remember when I was part of the Whitecaps front office when we were about to go into MLS. Um, there was a little bit over concern that the, uh, with them thinking that the Lions were going to be prepared for the fact that they were going to be a, a direct competitor in the marketplace because you know they're not only sharing the same stadium and BC Place but basically playing around the same time of year so you're competing head to head and that's a, that's an issue that you have in Toronto and in Montreal because they're now got MLS franchises so in Vancouver when we when I remember when when I was part of the club there they were thinking well the Lions must be thinking of doing some things to try and counter that and what they ended up finding out was that the Lions 
just continue to do what they were doing. And so everyone at the Whitecaps turned around and said, okay, we're going to get the younger demographic and the younger fan out. And the next thing you know, they very confidently went out, and I think rightfully so, for some time to claim that they have the best sporting atmosphere in Vancouver. It's been a big label if you go anywhere. The Whitecaps have. Yeah, yeah. the Whitecaps have. It's basically said. And, and, and that's where I think the source of frustration has probably come from the BC lines. But uh, the thing is, is that there were it, it was a situation that I think put the Lions in a position where they needed to think outside the box. And I still think to this point they need to try and do things that, that sort of gets people back. Because if you go to a Whitecaps game, you can see the more youthful side of things and, and a younger group. But then you go to a Lions game, it's an older group. They're coming in from the Fraser Valley or from Surrey. And, and they're, you know you can see people are more in their sort of 40s or 50s. You know They're very proud Lions fans. They're wearing the orange and black and, and so forth. But it's a, it's got a different dynamic, um, but I would say that especially right now, the Lions have got a big opportunity. I think to to try and get some some interest back in the team. You know, they've gone and made some moves as we know to try and and make themselves a bit of a contender. I still think that they're going to have a good season, and I say that because the Whitecaps are struggling on the field and as well off the field with with things right now. There that interest there has kind of gone or waned a little bit, and um, I think. You know, many of us that sort of cover that team are of the feeling that there needs to be a bit of a reset in terms of the organization stuff because uh, uh, it's not trending right now at, at, in a very good way. So it provides, I think, an opportunity for the Lions to try and get in there and jump on it. But yeah, I can see how they can be frustrated because for the longest time, the only other real competitor they've had out there has been the Vancouver Canucks. But this has kind of changed it. But you, you have to kind of, because I know that you had just J Jackie Perez on Monday here, yeah. and she kind of made a mention to uh, things on, on, on the Toronto marketplace, and she kind of listed all the various teams. Well, the dynamic in those situations are exactly the same. Well, I mean, the Argos have got to be as creative as they can in the, in the light of having Toronto SC and the Blue Jays and the, and, the, and the Leafs and even the Marlies to contend with, and then Montreal as well with the impact. Have, you know, the, the Alouettes have got to, to work quite hard to try and you know, counter uh, the interest that's there with that team because right now the, the Montreal Empire are playing quite well. So uh, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big challenge, but particularly right now for the BC Lions, I think they've got a big opportunity here to sort of you know, put, put, get themselves back in, in the marketplace a little bit in Vancouver. Just a comment from the Facebook wall. Tom's watching from Winnipeg this morning. He says, I was at the Canada Day Valor FC York 9 match. Only a handful of seats weren't occupied. Loved the enthusiasm. So, yes, I have sniffed out that across this land, soccer's growing. And that's why Simon's here. Yeah. But, Darren, you jump in uh, with any comments or yeah, questions well, you have for Simon Fudge. One, a tremendous name, by the way. I was thinking about it, and then it showed up on the Facebook questions about expansion and <laughs> where the Canadian Premier League is going. And yeah. will we see something in Regina, Saskatoon? I think there is a very strong possibility we're going to certainly have something in Saskatchewan. Um, I, I've got the feeling or the indication that uh, um, that Saskatoon is going to be the place to go. It would be, in my opinion, very wise that uh, that Saskatoon is is probably where the at least if there's going to be more than one team that ends up being located in this province, that certainly the, the first go round or that this expansion to, into this province should go there for a couple of reasons. I think you don't, I think it's important that the a new team like that isn't overshadowed by in a marketplace where the riders dominate as much as you have here in Regina. Uh, so that's one big thing, I think. You want to give them an opportunity, but you also want to go to a place that doesn't have any other, other than the rush, uh, another notable, a real sort of mm -hmm. professional team that goes as the competitor. The third reason would be uh, Saskatoon has always had a very strong soccer community, traditionally much stronger than Regina over the years. And from what I've gotten indications, meeting with some people I haven't met with in, uh, during my time here this week, uh, that that still seems to be the case. You know that there's uh, that the the organization and the people involved up there, it, it's just that lot stronger. So it would it, it just makes a lot more sense, I think, that if it is like a provincial team, much like the Riders in in this sense. That it, that it is actually based up there. It's not to say that they can't come down and play games down here in Regina, but uh, I think in Saskatoon, 
um, it, it, it would be probably the best place to go. And I think there's also interest from the CPL side to get a natural rival for Valor SC. You know, the, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers ownership have gone in and committed themselves uh, to having a team there that plays out of Investors Group Field. Same with Bob Young and, and the Thai Cats with, with Forge FC. So, you know, I, th- I think there's that interest there, especially when I think the uh, David Klanak and the, the CPL commissioner has gone on record as saying they want to try and get up to 16 teams from the existing seven that they have right now. Wow. Um, Darren, is that a slam dunk Griffith Stadium, do you think? For well, a venue? Or have they even got that far, Simon? I don't know if they... Um, it, I think that they may... I think they've been looking at... Uh, SMS? S- well, somewhere in the Prairie Land Park, next yeah. to Marcus Downs, possibly. They got a field there? Uh, well, they'd be looking somewhere around there. There's a grandstand there, I think, that they've got. From there. the racing. See, that's yeah. big. Well, not ah. from the racing, but sort of out in that area. I think they've been kind of looking around there. That I think that had been moved, uh, that had been sort of mentioned before, even a couple years ago, in certain... in various sort of soccer publications yeah. that they that that was something they want to do but I, I think they're kind of looking at trying to do something in and around uh, in in Prairie Land Park up there um, so uh, that's that's what I know at this point um, I mean it's nothing concrete but I think but it, having looked at where they would go it make, would, would make a lot of sense because the scale of the league is sort of if you're looking to have venues that are uh, good crowds and but sort of five to seven thousand in capacity I mean the existing teams right now sort of work in that whether it's Pacific FC on mm-hmm. Vancouver Island uh, what Spruce Meadows has set up with Cavalry FC and Calgary, FC Edmonton, uh, obviously Valor and Forge with CFL stadiums are, are using in the sort of lower end scale and having to scale it down a little bit. But then you've got York 9, you play out of York University in a smaller stadium. And then, um, you know, the one in Halifax is a great one. It's got great, it's modified and uh, has got a nice tight atmosphere to it. So I think it would be something along those lines. Uh, that they that the the people that are looking to try and uh, bring pro soccer here are looking to try and do. Raul Garcia reminding us, and I thank him for doing so. The Rattlers have joined the pro scene in Saskatoon, and uh, he's right, the Saskatchewan Rattlers office watching every morning. And Darren, well, I know for a fact that I'm going Friday night, Saskatchewan Rattlers taking on the Hamilton Honey yes. Badgers at SaskTel Center. You're not sure yet? Yeah. Are you in? It. I'm in. You're in no matter what. Okay, oh, great. Yeah. Guaranteed we're coming, Raul. And uh, maybe with our better halves as well. But you can count on the two ugly portions of the better half, Darren and I. Well, I'll speak for myself, sorry. You got the Jason Sudeikis. We can uh, wrangle them already. up. I'm sure we can get them to come. The with women? Us. Yes. Unless mine's a country thunder. It's a work in progress. Simon, you have a wedding to go to. Huh? Who's getting married? Uh, well, my uh, my good friend Dennis Wilson got married on Saturday. So I was ah. at the Connexus Arts Center while uh, you guys were l- lamenting the, 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 the Stampeders taking the curb part stomping. of the riders, which is not very pleasing to watch my, for myself as well. It was a kind of ironic situation because, you know, as the party of, was going on with the wedding, the, the riders were having their struggles and, and Vancouver Whitecaps were getting torn apart by La, LAFC, taking an early lead and then they lost 6-1, to one, which kind of makes the game they're playing tonight against Cavalry a really interesting one because it's the first time that CPL teams are going to go head-to-head with MLS wow. teams in, in the Canadian Championship. I'm into it now. I care. Yeah. yeah. What a great yeah. salesman right here. Um, we got to wrap up and roll. Uh, we're in the final minute of overtime. I guess it's going to end in a tie, Darren. But <laughs> sell, the, sell the viewers on why this was such an outstanding show. I think they're all great. But you said, this one's great. Tell well, people It's why. really great. I mean, we got some soccer talk in. We got a great hockey conversation with Rich Sutter. And we went out to Montreal. Joey Alferi was outstanding. Uh, Marshall and Hamilton was, was awesome. We went around the league. And I know a big chunk of our audience is from the Prairies. And even bigger from... The stats show that. From Regina. And that's yeah. important. And, and so I know there's going to be a lot of people that, that tuned into the show that said, we want our rider talk. And we're not getting that today because we want to go around the league. We're on a bye week. It's time to open up our borders a little bit. Well, we opened up the borders big time today. And I'm, I'm hoping the folks cool. across the country notice. And we can try and give them what they want a little bit, which is, which is always fun. Oh, it was so. a great day for Simon to come in yes. on, on that vein. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.